Hi. No. <laughs> hey everyone, my name's Juice and I do things, and today we've got a special treat for you. This is called River of Curse Knowledge, where my friend River, aka Cyboogs, calls me and my friend Zio on Discord and gives us curse knowledge about varying animals. Today's animal that is starring in the curse knowledge is the horse, or the equine, as some of you might think it's called. <laughs> no, <laughs> I think it's, it's called? You never truly know. Okay, all right. We're going to direct over to River, who's going to give us the first horse fact of the day. No. Well, first of all, I'd like to point out that the reason we're doing this is because Juice's reaction to learning about animals are it's so much and so funny that mm -hmm. we have to share it with the world. Oh, you made mm -hmm. me blush. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're really good. All right. Mm. Are you ready? Yeah. We're going to start from the bottom of the horse and work our way up. <laughs> I hate that. Go ahead. Do it. All right. First of all, um, the legs of the horse, you may notice, are kind of spindly. Um, yes. And they hold up a very large animal. Um, the legs of the horse are surprisingly strong. Um, there is a large, long tendon that goes down the legs, um, which acts as a spring and protects uh, the horse, but also um, gets snapped or sprained very often, which makes horses lame, which is a death sentence for any horse. Oh, what? Hold on. Um, wait, wait, mm -hmm. stop. When it, when it breaks its leg, it dies? Well, well, they put them down. Yeah, horses usually don't rea react very well to treatment when it comes to, like, hurting their legs. Um, and they're very big, heavy animals, so it's not good if they injure one of their four precious legs. Why don't, why don't we just put, like, a cast on them? I don't know. Why don't you ask the horse doctor? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Um... <laughs> Each of the horse's legs is a single arm or leg that ends in a finger. One finger. And you want to know which finger it is? No, which one? Is it the middle it's, finger? It's the middle finger. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're, you're telling me that my middle finger is the same as a horse leg? Yeah. No. More or less. <laughs> you're wrong. More or less. No, you're lying to me. We've all got a little bit of horse inside of us. No, we don't. We don't. I'm not like these animals. <laughs> I'm not like these beasts. Don't don't even compare. Don't the even hooves. compare me to them. Now, Juice, what do you think the hooves are made of? Bone, maybe. I don't. They look like they're made of bone. I know that they're made. Of, they make glue. Okay, interesting. I didn't know that you. Okay. Um, horse hooves are fingernails. <laughs> the whole thing. What? <laughs> Inside, when you look at a horse skeleton, usually the hooves are not uh, are not included <clears throat> because um, the hooves are fingernails, uh, and the actual bone inside is a very tiny, tiny, tiny little uh, little bone that doesn't even touch the ground. The hoof is basically. A fingernail that's turned into protective padding and uh, a wall at the front, which, uh, which, you know, spreads out the impact when the horse puts his foot down. So it kind of spreads the uh, impact so it doesn't damage the horse's foot, hopefully. So, and because they are fingernails horse hooves constantly grow no, and need no, to be no. trimmed regularly no <laughs> no are you telling me they can get bigger yeah no wait do wild horses have really long hooves no because wild horses usually um do a lot of digging for water what? sources um yes horses are known to dig for water sources what the f no you're wrong <laughs> no, they don't. They, they don't dig with their fingernails. They do it in Australia. <laughs> no. They do it in the Americas. No, they don't. No. 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 These do. big beasts. 
these big beasts walking on fingers walk up to a water source where they believe there to be water and digs their stupid little fingernail hooves deep into the dirt where we live. We're standing on it right now. We're standing on the earth that a horse may or may not have stuck their stupid legs in. Yeah. This is the worst. Yeah. No. Also, um, horse hooves can become overgrown and it causes a lot of feet issues you can imagine with the horse yeah, they can, I could imagine. They can the hooves can grow uh forward and sort of turn into curved little elf shoes no um, don't don't tell me that it's no. very painful to look at no not at all they can also become they can become damaged in many different ways um uh, but that's about everything with the legs that i have to say okay um Next, we're going to go to the body of the horse. And the body of the horse is very interesting because the majority of it is taken up by lungs and intestines. Oh. <laughs> um, the horse lungs are very large. Are they? Yeah, it takes up most of the horse's chest cavity um, along with the heart, which in a thoroughbred racing horse can be larger than your head. I hate you. <laughs> no, they can't. I, no, don't tell me that when I'm standing next to a horse, its its heart is the same size as my head and it's pounding right next to me. No. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. No, it doesn't. This is awful. This is awful. Now, um, when these horses are running, especially thoroughbreds, which run especially fast because of selective breeding, um... The horses breathe very quickly. They uh, they breathe in and out rapidly to uh, keep the oxygen throwing, flowing through their blood so that they have plentiful oxygen as they're running. Um, the way that the horse manages to breathe so quickly in a full tilt run yeah. is with its intestines. No, 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 no. The in the intestines of the horse no. um, slam forward and press against the diaphragm of the horse. Oh, do they? Which in turn presses on the lungs and empties them of air rapidly. And then the guts shift backwards in the horse and the lungs fill up with air again. Are you? No, um, you're saying that the reason the horse can even breathe when they run is because their organs are doing some really grotesque high five inside the beef animal. <laughs> yeah, basically. Why do um, organs is... do that? Why do horses get that, that luxury? I don't, uh, That's a luxury? Not, I wouldn't really call that a luxury because one of the things about having very mobile guts is that they get tangled up. What? <laughs> That's a very common problem with horses. Do, do, they can get tangled up. I believe it's called colic. Do they not have a skeleton cause colic. separating it? No, they they have the diaphragm, which separates the guts from the lungs, obviously. How are they alive? But, but the guts can get tangled up in themselves. Oh, no. There's, like, procedures where you have to, like, reshift around the horse guts oh. to fix them, and it's... You know, it's very interesting. <laughs> Are you okay, there's a reason, like, I went to horse camp, and there's a reason <laughs> they don't tell us these things, because it's going to stay with me. And see, my parrot over there, Chili, she knows, she knows that it's going to stick with me for the rest of my life, and every time no, I'm going to look at a noodle No, she's plant, ignorant, and ignorance is bliss. No. <laughs> oh... Every time I look at a noodle plate, I'm going to see all my noodles shifting around when I'm walking back to my place from the Cracker Barrel, uh, not Cracker Barrel, Golden Corral Buffet, not a sponsor, and I'm going to sit down, and I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to be like, oh, River and his horse facts. Maybe mm -hmm. believe this is horse organs on my tray. Yep. I hate that. Anyway, are you ready for, um... Our final segment of horse information. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, finally, we are going to uh, end on the horse's head 
Specifically, oh. its mouth, oh. which is filled yeah. with its teeth. <laughs> um, now, the horse teeth are very interesting because, oh. yeah, because after their baby teeth fall out, the adult yeah. teeth that grow in, um, they're very, very long and they go very, very far into the skull. The roots go very deep. Um, and as the horse ages, the, to- the teeth get worn down and the they sort of come out to make up for that. Um, the teeth and grow in? They don't grow continuously throughout the whole uh, throughout their whole lives, but they are just stupid long and continuously uh, continuously pu- push in. Oh no, you cut out. They they push out over time, Oy. and uh, there are some interesting things that can happen to horses' teeth. Really? Yeah. Oh, um, for one thing, uh, you remember how I was uh, researching um, how to tell a horse's age by um, looking at their teeth? Yeah, yeah, and I said, shut up, I hate you. <laughs> yeah. um, those exact words. Um, and the horse's teeth, um, mm-hmm. they can grow out into a variety of shapes depending on how the horse chews or what the horse eats. Oh, Really, it's just a really random fun surprise. Which yep, and horse... sometimes you might uh, open up your horse's mouth I will to never... see that they have um, that they have chewed their t- their teeth into a sort of blade shape. Oh, great! Oh, <laughs> which can um, which can damage the inside of the horse's mouth, kind of like when you bite uh, on your tongue or the side of your mouth. Yeah. They can bite theirs yeah. uh, as well. Yeah, I'd assume they'd have some problems if they're walking around with knives in their mouths. <laughs> yeah. Um, but fear not, there is a way to fix it. Really? And it is a procedure called floating. Now, do you want to know what floating is? I don't think he does. River? That we should. I have not wanted to know a single fucking thing you've told me during the entirety of this goddamn podcast. But go ahead, tell me what floating is. All right. So um, you basically take uh, what is essentially a gigantic nail file (laughs) and you stick it in the horse's mouth and you file down its teeth to a nice uniform shape. A nice one? A nice shape? (laughs) Yeah. You can go into a nice shape after looking like a knife. (laughs) Yep. I don't think I can ever look at a horse's mouth and think, that's pretty nice. That's a very nice shape you've got there, Mr. Horse, ever again, after them nice. opening their mouths and showing me nice their Nice for the horse. Place. This is actually a very common procedure that needs to happen for old horses. Oh, okay. When they grow older, their teeth casually turn into knives. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. They just so- kind of, they, they sort of use, end up uh, accidentally using their own teeth as like whetstones to uh, sharpen they're molars sweet radical radical phenomenal fucking tubular thank you is this all is this all i i have one more thing to say okay have you ever heard the term don't look a gift horse in the mouth i have and i feel like i've asked you what that is and i feel like you might have told me once or twice but i have for safety reasons and survival purposes (laughs) removed it from my memory so go ahead replenish me with that knowledge all right uh, the common folk saying is taken from the era when gifting horses was common. Um, and since the teeth of the animal are a good indication of its age, it was considered rude to inspect the teeth of a gifted horse. Um, so the saying is used in reference to being an ungrateful gift receiver. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, so that was the least visceral response we had. So when, so say we were back in I don't know the fucking fourteen eighty fours or whatever, and you came to my home and said, "Oi, James, got you a horse here," and I open the door and I'm like, "Ay," and then I, it would be rude for me to lift the horse's lips to see if they are in fact knives. 
<laughs> it would be rude for you to lift the horse's lips and open up its mouth to look inside and inspect how old it is. But if you gave me a dying horse, I wouldn't want to obtain it. I'd it have to do with that thing. Because it was like it was like you didn't trust the person who was gifting you the horse. I don't. You, don't. you trust me, don't you, Juice? No, I don't. And I would want them to know I don't trust them if they came to my house with a beast such as that. And I would want them to know that I would be very, very well, pissed if they just dropped horses. off a dying horse at my door. Okay. Well, there you have it. <laughs> there you have it, everyone. In conclusion, horses. Juice still hates horses. In conclusion, I do hate horses, and uh, River has said that this is a trend that's been going around on Tumblr, but I do not feel like this is the case, because many comedians in the past have found a very vast oasis of comedy coming from horse hatred, such as the McElroy brothers and John Mulaney. But, personally, I do believe that horses are a beast and that we should not ever go near them or attempt to kind of domesticate them any further because they do seem like they could turn on us if they grew that other brain cell that they've been kind of keeping away <laughs> from their evolutionary cycle. Next time, maybe I'll tell you about cows. <gasps> maybe Yay, cows! Maybe you will. Zio cows seems are to very, very different from horses. Very much enjoy that. Okay. Um, well, this is this podcast has gone on for 16 minutes. This has been the worst 16 seconds of my life, and I feel like there will be... 16 seconds? 16 minutes of my life, and I feel like in the future, <laughs> um, there will be other 15 or so minutes that are going to be spent with me feeling like I'm about to die. So, uh, thank you everyone so much for watching, <laughs> and we will see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye! <laughs>